Okay, welcome back to my new uh, JavaScript animation tutorial. Um, in the la previous video, I explained how you can uh, create a very simple animation just with an object moving from one corner of your canvas to the other one, uh, which is not very spectacular, of course. And now I would like to extend this animation uh, by showing you one physics application. And also I promised last time to show how you can make this independent from your frame rate. This is very important because maybe you just have some program running in the background uh, which occupies your CPU or maybe uh, your system is overall not very fast and then it can be that here and there some frames are skipped and when you only rely on the frame rate of course then uh, this might cause uh, some severe problems in your animation like in real life we have to make sure that uh, yeah, the distance between the different frames uh, are constant and in order uh, to do that, um, first I would like to make a copy of the previous created tutorial file, tutorial1.html, and we create a new one which we call tutorial2.html. And again, we can open this in any text editor whatsoever you like. Here we included last time this um, argument timestamp, yeah, which gives you basically a variable which we have not used at that time. Uh, and this is the timestamp in millisecond. And now we want to use that. Uh, but before we can actually do that, we first have to define uh, a few global variables. Uh, and let's suppose uh, the first one we call old timestamp. And this uh, have to be uh, set to zero as an initial value, of course. And then we can also create another uh, variable, which we call maybe seconds passed. And this gives you then the number of seconds that passed uh, between each frame. And maybe we can uh, shift this up to make it uh, more uniform. Okay, and now we have to go to our animation loop function. And there we only have to write seconds passed equals and then this timestamp here minus old timestamp divided by 1000 because as I said, this is the time in millisecond and we want to convert this into seconds. So we have to divide it by 1000. And then we have to write here old timestamp equals timestamp. And this is very important because uh, whenever a new frame starts, then the old timestamp has to set to the new timestamp in order to then calculate the difference between the new one and the old one again. So what we get now, as I said, uh, are the seconds that passed between each frame. And uh, yeah, that's of course we have to put now into our time that we calculate here. Um, yeah, in order to, to do that, we should also define another variable, which we call maybe uh, animation speed. So we can write here animation speed. And this is a scaling factor and tells uh, JavaScript how fast it should animate our process. So uh, let's suppose we can uh, give it a value of 500 because this I tested before and this works quite well. So we have to write here just t plus equals and then animation speed times seconds passed. And this is in principle everything. Now we sum up the time from which we can calculate then the position of our object. So now having an object which moves just linear in time uh, yeah, does not uh, give us any nice result. We also want to maybe uh, see something which is related to real physics. So I was thinking we can extend our uh, animation to an object that moves in the gravitational field of the Earth. Yeah? So let's suppose you have the ball and you throw it under a specific angle, then you get this projectile motion of the ball and uh, after a certain amount of time it hits the ground again. And this we can now actually simulate. So in order to do that, uh, we can go to our variable, uh, which we uh, t for the time which we initialized with zero. Um, and then we can define a few more variables related to that. So maybe we can define an start position where our ball should start. And of course, this has to be in, in the pixel space. Um, so let's suppose it should start at x0 equal to 0. And y0 should be equal to canvas height. Yeah? So because the, the coordinate 0, 0 is on the upper left corner, the origin of our coordinate system, and um, yeah, due to this reason, when we set y0 equal to canvas height, it, it will start now in the lower left corner of our canvas. 
Okay, and then we should also uh, define the variables x, which should be uh, which should get x zero as an initial value, and the variable zero, which should get y zero as an initial value. These are then the coordinates which will change in time. And uh, yeah, then we can also define an angle under which our ball will be thrown. So I think 45 degree is reasonable somehow. And then we should also define uh, speed with which we throw our ball. And uh, I found out that if we define this uh, as 0 0.5, then um, this, this seems to work quite well. However, uh, because we have a motion in the gravitational field of the Earth, so we also have to define a g-factor. And usually, as you know, this should be 10 meter per second square. However, uh, now we are in the pixel space here, so uh, I try to make some rough estimation how fast a ball should move uh, in this canvas. So I defined here g as uh, 0 0.005 uh, pixels per square seconds, I think would be the unit then. But however, you can play a little bit with this around and then you can see how actually uh, the trajectory is changing when you exchange the value here with something else. Okay, now the only thing which we have to do in our update function, we have to actually uh, yeah, calculate the x and y position yeah, of this uh, variables that we defined here. Uh, the formulas you can find basically in Wikipedia, for example, it's just or in any kind of physics books where uh, mechanics and kinematics is covered. So you can um, actually uh, take these formulas directly. And for the x coordinate, we will find out that we have to uh, multiply the speed just times uh, the cosine of, in this case, minus angle, yeah, because our coordinate system is now rotated basically. Uh, and the angle we have given here in degree and we have to convert it into radiant. So um, we have to multiply this with pi uh, divided by um, 180. And then uh, this we have to multiply with the time t and add our initial value x0, yeah, which is in this case 0. But uh, in general, we could also shift it to another position. So it's better to add our x0 here. And this cosine function comes also from the math package. Okay, and now we have to do the same for y. And uh, this formula looks very similar. But however, we have to... Um, use this uh, one half g t square correlation. So we have to write here 0 0.5 times g times t times t. And the minus uh, sign uh, is again omitted here because as I said, the coordinate system is so rotated. And uh, then this we have to add here speed times math dot sign. Again, we take this math package minus angle times uh, math dot pi divided by 180 times t plus y0. And in this case, it's important that we add this original coordinate y0. Okay, and then uh, the only thing which we have to do, we have to change here uh, coordinates of our, uh, of our ball, of our sphere, of our circle, whatever we call it. Um, we have to insert here this x coordinate that we calculate. And here we have to insert our y coordinate that we calculate. And maybe we don't want to um, only draw the lines. Maybe we also want to fill it to make it more visible. Yeah, and now actually we can check it. So we can open again. Uh, we can use again our Chromium browser to open it, tutorial2.html. And at the moment we cannot see anything. It means maybe I did some typing mistake somewhere. Yeah, here pi should be written in this way. Yeah. And now it works, you can see the ball moving. However, I would like to increase the canvas size a little bit to make sure that we can see the full motion. And uh, when we update now our, uh, our website, then we can see here how the ball basically moves. And it should be very similar to uh, a real ball which moves in the gravitational field of the Earth. So uh, another thing which we can now play with is the animation speed. So as I said, we can make this, for example, smaller. Then we can see a very slow motion, uh, how the ball moves, um, yeah, which is quite nice to uh, get an idea uh, and to yeah, make the trajectory basically visible. But of course, um, if you want to see how it works in real life, maybe we should even make it faster so we can increase the speed to 1000 
and then it goes quite fast. If you look very careful, then you can see sometimes some frames are actually skipped. Um, so uh, this shows then how important it is to really stick to the actual time in seconds instead of using the frame rate. Uh, and this is basically everything what I want to show today. Um, I hope you liked the video. If yes, please hit the like button. Um, please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far. And I would be happy if you stay tuned uh, for my next videos, which will come. And uh, if it works for you or if you have any further question, then please put it into the comment section. Yeah? And with this, I want to thank you very much and uh, hopefully see you soon.